Well, the fun continues, and hopefully this is just the start up to release, but today Rockstar Games gave us further details on the characters of Dutch's gang, including descriptions of each member. Additionally, they teased again more reveals to come, but we also got an exclusive interview coming from The Hollywood Reporter. So we have a lot of new information to discuss and break down, so make sure you are subscribed as I'm one of your best sources on this game. Turn notifications on for all the breaking news to come, but let's not waste any more time and we'll start first with the exclusive interview coming from The Hollywood Reporter. They were fortunate to talk with Josh Bass, art director at Rockstar San Diego, and Aaron Garbett, director of art at Rockstar North. While a lot of the things they went over isn't necessarily new, we did get some interesting quotes which further elaborates on Rockstar's mission and goals for this game, as well as more details on some of the new gameplay features. So first, Rockstar would discuss why they chose to go with this story, with Josh Bass saying, Dutch's presence looms over the original Red Dead Redemption, and his influence on events was a big inspiration for the setting and direction of Red Dead Redemption 2. We all wanted to know more about him and the gang. What was it like writing in that game? What led them to the events of the original game? What happened to them along the way? Which I will say, based on how Red Dead Redemption was written, I'm not sure if it was ever intended for a sequel or prequel, but maybe because of the reception with these characters, they wanted to explore their past more because truthfully we only have an outline on some of the key events that occurred. But next, Aaron Garbett would discuss what they aim to create with this game. He would say, We've aimed to capture a wide slice of American life in 1899, a rapidly industrializing nation that would soon have its sights on the world stage, and would do whatever is possible to modernize. It's a brutal landscape with a sordid history, but also one that's full of opportunity. One of the most satisfying aspects of creating a world of such scope and scale is the ability to experience a whole range of stories and characters in your journey across that world. The gang's journey and the game's epic scope make room to touch on all aspects of turn-of-the-century America in a meaningful, substantial way. Continuing on, Garbett would offer insight into their open-world design for this game, saying, We are trying to make a world that's both expansive and deep at the same time. We've always tried to create worlds that feel like places as much as games, and we've been able to use the latest technology to push that idea forward in ways we've never have before. He would further explain that the world is persistent and alive, but also more deliberate and intimate in ways which make sense for a world where you were still mostly getting around by horse or on foot. You can exchange stories with a barman in a saloon, talk yourselves out of trouble with a local lawman, hijack a train, or simply rummage through the drawers of an old homestead, hoping to find cash or just some food to help the gang survive, and seamlessly transition between these things in ways that are both fun and are in keeping with Arthur as a character. One of the important things that Rockstar has pointed out is you can't do anything you want, but things that only make sense for the character of Arthur Morgan. It seems like most of the game is free, but there's going to be certain things that you can't necessarily do. They really want players to be immersed in this story, and personally, I really like this attitude towards this aspect of Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, this is something that Garbett would further emphasize, saying when you first enter a town and you see the townspeople going about their business, building houses, selling papers, hanging out, you can instantly tell that we've never experienced this detail in an open open world game before, where you see a shack on a hill and you know there is something interesting for you there. Maybe you will break in and stumble onto a mystery or meet the owner and end up getting tangled in something. I think that's when you can tell that it's new territory, when you're not even sure if what you've done was a mission or not, when all the systemic parts of the world come together with our scripted content in the right ways. It's kind of incredible. These are the small details I love within Rockstar made games, and I think one thing I personally love hearing is how interesting interactive this world is, and how alive it'll be with or without us actually doing anything. Most open world games, and I think you could say games in general, rely on players doing things and actually interacting with the world. So it's going to be different with Red Dead Redemption 2, but this really could be the next step of the open world genre, which Rockstar has set the bar before and I think that they will do it again. But lastly, Garbett would further add that the level of immersion is their biggest goal, saying, making the players forget that they are playing a game and instead leaving them with a memory of a place, that's how I leave this project personally. Now we are finishing up, I've spent years living in this world every day, and I'm going to miss it, but I leave it with the memories of a place I've lived in. That's pretty amazing. I think it's important people remember that this game has been in development for eight years, and the people at Rockstar San Diego, and probably Rockstar North, I would imagine that they have been on this project the longest. 
balanced, but games typically take between 3 to 5 years to develop, so these developers being on this game for this long, it certainly will be emotional moving on. But if anyone from Rockstar is watching, I think I speak for everyone when we say that we respect and love the phenomenal work you guys create and your dedication to always developing the very best game. There's just so much excitement around this game because of the quality people know that they will get from Rockstar. It's been 5 years since their last game release, and here in 2018 I don't think many people understand how special a Rockstar made game is, and I hope Red Dead Redemption 2 blows everyone away. There's a reason why Rockstar rules this gaming industry and is at the top. Now, some final notes I do want to offer from this interview is that Rockstar did mention that we'll see the contrast from the rich and the poor. With locations like St. Denis, which looks like a rich city, and then Van Horn, which clearly is run down, I think that contrast will be clear and maybe more chaos and crimes will come around Van Horn than in the rich city of St. Denis, where the authorities probably watch and listen for any sort of crime. Also, Rockstar continued discussing how this story will show the gang falling apart through the eyes of Arthur Morgan. Again. But either way, this really was a phenomenal interview that I will have a link in the description if you wish to read further. Now, this isn't the only big news coming, because Rockstar officially offered character descriptions, but they also teased on their website that more is coming. Now, there appears to be a features tab, which only has Dutch Vanderlyn gangs listed, and then under it it says more to come, which I imagine in the coming weeks and days we'll see artwork, descriptions, and other images of rival gangs, maybe the Pinkerton specifically weapons, probably wildlife, and maybe even more. Which, this may go in line with some of the upcoming previews, so maybe Edge Magazine will be next to reveal the next page on their website. Either way, Rockstar did provide us with character descriptions, which gives us further details about these Dutch's gang members. Nonetheless, let's go through all of this. First, we have a description of the gang, which says, A gang of outlaws, renegades, and misfits bonded together under the charismatic and idealistic Dutch Vanderlyn. They have chosen to live outside the the law and now fear it may be catching up with them. Now the first character listed is Dutch, the leader of a sizable gang of outlaws and misfits. Idealistic, anarchic, charismatic, well-read, well-lived, but possibly starting to unravel under the pressures of the encroaching modern world. But next we have is Hosea Matthews, who is a master con artist, gentleman, and thief. Hosea has been Dutch's closest friend and right-hand man for over 20 years. Intelligent and quick-witted, he can talk his way into or out of just about anything. Next we have is Molly O'Shea, a Dublin girl and the object of Dutch's affection, which is something that I predicted, and it actually says for now at least. Molly is too high-strung for a life on the run, and it's all starting to take a toll on her. Next is Susan Grimshaw, the undisputed boss an arbiter of justice in the camp. Everything would have fallen apart years ago without Susan in charge. Tenacious and iron-willed, she stands for no nonsense. And then we have Pearson, which I love that he doesn't have a last name or anything, it's just Pearson. The camp's butcher and cook, Pearson served a short stint in the Navy that he likes to talk about at length, a loud, jolly degenerate who is somewhat in denial about the turn his life has taken. Next is Mika Bell, and I think this artwork is probably some of the best that Rockstar has made for Red Dead Redemption 2. He is a career criminal and hitman, wild and unpredictable, but he lives for the action, and I think he's going to be one of the outspoken individuals of Dutch's gang, which may end up leading to an unfortunate death, maybe? I'm not really sure, but I do think that he's going to have conflicts with Dutch, which may prove to be costly. Charles Smith is a relatively recent recruit to the gang. Charles is quiet and reserved, but extremely competent in everything he does, and virtually unbeatable in a fight, a decent, honest man who also happens to be deadly. Next is Bill Williamson, an ex-soldier discharged from the army, possibly dishonorably, which would make sense being that this is Bill. Hot-headed, he tends to act first and think later, but is tough, dedicated, and always ready to fight. Implores. I, I implores you to go back and tell them to send someone just a little bit more impressive next time. Leopold Strauss, originally hailing from Austria, Herr Strauss is responsible for keeping the gang's books and running their money lending operation. A serious, somewhat shifty, and unemotional man, he has all the qualities a lone shark needs, and that was kind of our prediction that we had of Strauss. I thought he may have been a doctor or a psychiatrist, there were some rumors about that, but he looks to just be the guy in charge of the gang's money. But next we have John Marston, once an orphan street kid taken under Dutch's wing at the age of 12, John has always had to live by his wits. 
Shrewd, fearless, and strong-willed, he and Arthur are Dutch's proudest protégés. Now, one thing I find very interesting about this backstory is that it doesn't exactly match up with the one from Red Dead Redemption, because he was actually sent to an orphanage, uh, and he spent his teenage years there. So I guess in this Red Dead Redemption 2, he skips out on the orphanage? I'm not really sure, maybe that'll be explained, but I did find that interesting. But next we have is Abigail Roberts, which obviously eventually will be John's wife. An orphan who grew up scraping out a living in dive bars and brothels in the West, Abigail is a strong, straight-talking woman who has seen a lot of life and knows what it takes to survive against the odds. And then following Abigail, we have her son, Young Jack, who has grown up with the gang, although everyone has done their best to shield him from the more nefarious elements, especially his mother, Abigail. He loves everything about nature and the outdoor life, and is carefully watched over by his many aunts and uncles. And the one thing I can say about Jack is he's going to be the innocent part part of Red Dead Redemption 2, so all the shit may be going on around us, but maybe Jack will be the one to put a smile on our face when not everything else is exactly going for Arthur. But next we have is Karen Jones. You know, she's a little thick, like I said before. A consummate scam artist and trigger woman who can drink pretty much anybody under the table. Bold and full of fun, she loves the outlaw life and wouldn't have it any other way. Javier Escuela, a notorious bounty hunter and Mexican revolutionary. Javier immediately had a strong connection to Dutch's ideals, very committed, passionate, and loyal. Tilly Jackson, an outlaw from the age of 12. Tilly ran with another gang before joining up with Dutch. Savvy, resilient, and dependable. She can more than handle herself and is not afraid to speak her mind. But I have to say I was completely wrong about her. I thought that she was going to be a different type of character. Maybe somebody who was more quiet. Maybe somebody that was being protected by the gang. But no, looks like she can hold her own. But now we move to Uncle. A hanger-on and good time guy, Uncle is always around when the whiskey is open and never around when there's any work to be done. If he wasn't so entertaining, Dutch would have cut him loose years ago. Then we have Mary Beth Gaskill. I couldn't really pinpoint who she was before, but her description is a kind, good-natured young woman, which makes her the perfect criminal. By the time people realize they've been duped, Mary Beth is already on her way home with the money. So she's a sneaky criminal, or a sneaky outlaw. And then we have Lenny Summers, and his description is, Young Lenny has been on the run since he was 15 years old after killing the man who murdered his father. Smart, educated, competent, and ambitious. He is always ready to do his part. But next we move on to the stranger man look-alike character, Josiah Trelawney, and his description is a flamboyant conjurer, conman, and trickster. Trelawney is a very hard man to pin down, but he's always able to bring good leads. And I actually don't think he is the stranger man. At first I thought he was, but I think this is just a different character. Does look very similar, I will say that. Reverend Swanson is an ex-clergyman now lost to debauchery. Swanson has fallen a long way from the standards he once set himself. If he hadn't saved Dutch's life in the past, it's unlikely the gang would have kept him around for this long. Which, from this description, it seems like he isn't very helpful, and maybe the drinking's gotten in the way of that. Next, we have is Sean McGuire, who is a cocky young Irish thief and stick-up man who's come from a long line of criminals and political dissidents. He always wants a piece of the action and believes in himself, perhaps a little too much, and yeah, he came off as cocky, maybe a little wacky, maybe being a little bit of some comedic relief. But now we get to Sadie Adler, I've said it before, she's one of my favorite new characters, and she has a very interesting backstory, a widow who is hell-bent on taking revenge upon those who killed her husband, relentless and afraid of nothing and no one, the wrong woman to cross but very loyal to those she loves. So, I'm very intrigued by her past. I do wonder if that's going to be something that plays out within the events of Red Dead Redemption 2. Who killed her husband? Maybe that was a Pinkerton agent? I guess that'll be something that we'll be able to explore, and hopefully we'll get some answers for it. But finally, lastly, we have Arthur Morgan, Dutch's most dependable and capable enforcer since he was a boy. The outlaw life is all Arthur has ever known, sharp, cool-headed, and ruthless, but with his own sense of honor, a man who gets the job done. So yeah, definitely a ton of new details released today, and hopefully it keeps coming, but ultimately, I really hope early next week we get the next gameplay video. This is what everyone is eagerly awaiting now, and it feels a bit strange that Rockstar didn't at least tease or even mention it. But anyway, what do you guys think of all these new details we just went over? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and also consider subscribing for much more Red Dead Redemption to content to come, and remember, outlaws for life.